Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and I'm excited about this one. So if you followed me at all, you know that I'm a realtor in the Knoxville area and today I want to talk to you about five surrounding towns that I think you should have your eye on if you're looking at moving to the area. Now, the great thing about these surrounding towns is that they're all they're all within a very reasonable drive to Knoxville. They all have really great things about them and they all even have some cons. And so today we're gonna dig in just a little bit and talk about these five towns. Okay, the first town I'm gonna talk to you about is actually the town that I live in, it's Maryville. Okay, uh, Maryville is known for having really good schools and if you look at niche.com, they rank really high in their list. Um, you know, of, of schools. And I actually know several people, including my wife, who their families moved here from other places because the schools are so good. Um, their academics are great. Their, uh, their sports programs are really good as well. Um, and staying on topic with academics, uh, Maryville also has a college, it's Maryville College. And it's actually a very nice college. I've heard great things about it. The campus is beautiful. Um, it, it's just, it's all around really nice. So, you know, if you have a kid in college or maybe they're gonna be getting to that age in the near future, certainly, you know, check it out. A lot of people, you know, are all about UT and UT is awesome. It, it's, you know, it's a cool campus and everything gets you, you know, in the city uh, but you know don't don't discount Maryville College um, so let's talk about um, some things that I really like about Maryville um, one thing that I love about Maryville is the shopping okay Maryville really in the last 10 years or so or so has uh, has just developed a ton I mean even before that we had plenty but we've got tons of restaurants we have really good restaurants we've got middle-of-the-road restaurants we've got tons of fast food, mom and pa shops, um, you know, really a little bit of everything. Um, as far as shopping goes, you've got all the, you know, basically the necessities, you know, your TJ Maxx's, you know, your Ross dress for less, we've got an Old Navy, you know, Dick's Sporting Goods. Um, there's really, as far as shopping goes, I mean, you don't ever have to leave Maryville unless you're just really looking for something special. And especially nowadays with the internet, most people are buying that online anyways. Um, so Maryville shopping, good. You're going to be perfectly happy with it. You've got everything you could possibly need. Um, something that I personally love about Maryville is that we're super close to the Smoky Mountain National Park. Um, you know, we're right in the foothills of the Smokies. So we get a lot of really pretty views and we have great access to the park. Okay, so if you've ever um, visited the area, you've probably been to like Cades Cove or maybe you drove up to like the Chimney Tops or Clingman's Dome or something like that. Um, and if you've done that, there's a really good chance you've actually uh, driven through Townsend. Now Townsend is part of Blount County, which is the same county as Maryville. So for me, I can be in the park in 30 minutes and that's really nice. I love it. I do a lot of fly fishing up there. You know, sometimes my wife and I just go drive around um, and we actually even like Townsend. There's, you know, there's some restaurants in there. Heck, last week we went up there and, and, uh, and ate at one of their restaurants. So um, access to the park is really nice. Um, also, another thing that I like is that we have access to a lot of different bodies of water. Okay, so we're big lake people here. It gets hotter than heck in the summertime. So, you know, my wife and I try to get into, we try to get to the lake as much as possible. And one cool thing about um, Maryville is, you know, again, Maryville's in Blount County and Blount County and Knoxville are, are divided by the Fort Loudoun uh, Lake. So what's cool about that is that our friends in Knoxville can you know, leave from their marinas or boat ramps or whatever. We can leave from our marinas or boat ramps or whatever, and we can kind of meet in the middle. So there's lots of really cool little party coves or just chill places you know, to go hang out with your friends, lots of water activities, you know, it's, it's really cool. Um, another body of water that we really like is Teleco. Now, Teleco, um, and, and I'm talking about all these different bodies of water because it's nice because from where I am in Maryville, it's you know just a 15, 20 minute drive to either one of these. So um, Teleco is awesome because it's really pretty. Um, it's not quite as developed as Knoxville. So like 
like if you're on Fort Loudon Lake and you look around, all you're gonna see is like houses and boat docks. You know, it, of course it's still pretty, it's the lake, you know, it's really nice, uh, but Teleco isn't quite as developed. So you look around and you got a lot more like, you know, ridges with trees and mountain views and, you know, and the water is, is a, a little bit colder because it's it's closer to the mountains. So that's nice too, it, it's, it's a little bit more refreshing, especially whenever we get towards the end of summer because our lakes do, you know, tend to heat up, especially the ones, you know, the bigger ones that are further away from the mountains. Um, and, and speaking of mountains, there's one more body of water I want to talk to you about that is awesome. It's just a, it's a little piece of heaven. It's called Chilhowee Lake. It's a small lake. In fact, there's only one boat ramp on the entire thing. There's no marinas. There's no houses. There's nothing. There's not even cell phone service. Uh, but the really cool thing about it is it's just gorgeous. I mean, you're in the mountains, so real pretty views. The water is very clean. It's coming straight from North Carolina, you know, through the mountains. Um, and it stays cold pretty much throughout the, the entire summertime. So we go up there quite a bit as well. It's a cool little place to, to explore around. Um, you know, we, we certainly like it. So water access is, you know, really important. Again, you know, like I said, we, we just love the water. Um, you know, for me, Maryville is kind of the perfect little place because I love being, you know, in the park close to that. I love being near, you know, different bodies of water. I, I like to fish, if you guys didn't know that about me. Um, I love to fish, if it's fly fish or fishing from the boat, what, whatever. So Maryville kind of has me in an area to where I'm really close to everything. And then I'm also in real estate, so obviously I'm driving around in different towns, and Maryville's not far from any of them. I mean, I'm 20 minutes from Knoxville, you know, 20 minutes to Lenore City, you know, there's, there's a, a big old you know area that I can cover that's not far from my house so those are the those are the pros to living in Maryville I do want to talk about a couple cons okay one of those is going to be pricing right so the secrets out with Maryville right at, at, most people know I get at least 20 calls a week you know from people that want to talk about Maryville you know potentially move to Maryville um, and because of that our prices like everywhere else have gone up but especially you know I mean used to you could get a really nice place in Maryville for like 200,000 um, nowadays really you're looking at like 400 if you want just kind of your middle of the road you know nice subdivision you know decent little house um, and they certainly can get a lot more expensive than that and you're really not going to be able to find anything for you know for less than 300 that's nice and that's just the way that it is um, so that's that's con number one uh, con number two I would say is going to be um, traffic and now this is really relevant to what you're used to okay like I've got clients that are from Tampa Florida from California and traffic here is great for them You've got to understand I'm a local and I'm used to being able to just zip around everywhere, but where our population has gone up, where all this new development is going on, I mean, they've added like four new red lights just on my side of town. So it used to take me five minutes to get to the grocery store. Now it takes me like eight or nine. Really, it's not that bad, but you know, I'm going to complain about it just because, you know, people like to complain about stuff. So if I had to give some cons, those are my two cons. All right, the next town I want to talk to you about is Kingston. So Kingston is west of Knoxville. Um, and the really nice thing about Kingston is you really kind of get that country, uh, that country living feel, you know, because you're, you're out in the country. There's not as much development. There certainly still are tons of neighborhoods. There's shopping and everything else. But it's just, you know, you can get out there and really kind of feel like you're in the country, which I love. I, I love that. That's, that's why I like East Tennessee so much. Um, another cool thing about Kingston is that Watts Bar Lake runs through it. So you get a lot of mountain views. You're going to get a lot of pretty lake views. Um, there's Kingston City Park, which has sidewalks. You can ride your bike or if you want to run, you know, along the, the river there, you can. Um, there's playgrounds and stuff for the kids as well. Um, so the, the lake's always a huge bonus if you hadn't figured it out yet. I, I love water. Um, uh, the next thing, let's talk about shopping. Um, so shopping in Kingston is not horrible. You're going to have your necessities. You, you've got some restaurants, a lot of fast food restaurants. You're going to have your convenience stores, your hardware stores. There's certainly a Walmart. Um, I'm, I imagine there's $1,000 generals out there. 
Um, but it's not the best, it's not the worst. You have everything you need. It's not like you're gonna have to drive to Knoxville um, you know, for anything unless you just really want something. But another pro to living in Kingston um, is that if you're situated right to where you're close to the highway, really you're only gonna be like 30 minutes from West Knoxville, and West Knoxville is the most the most desirable part of Knoxville. That's where you have the absolute best shopping. So in the right situation, you could have everything you need in your little town of Kingston, and then you could be 30 minutes away from, I guess, the mecca of shopping in Knoxville, which, you know, depending on where you're from, could be great, could, you know, you could hate it, I don't know. Um, now, something else uh, that I would say is a pro to Kingston is the pricing. Um, now, you're not going to go out there and get an absolute steal. I don't think steals exist anymore. But you can go out there and get a very you know, reasonably priced home. Um, you know, you can get a better bang for your buck, you know, in Kingston. So like in Maryville, where like 400 will get you, you know, kind of that middle of the road, you know, home in Kingston, like 300 would probably do it, right? And now Kingston definitely has some higher end properties as well that would be way above that. I mean, you know, especially a lake house or something like that. Um, let's talk about the cons of Kingston. Um, I kind of already touched on one. I would say one would be the shopping. Um, you know, like if you wanted to go out and have like a really nice steak dinner, there's not a ton of places you could go. I, I don't really know if there are any. I think there's maybe one. Um, if you wanted to go, you know, get you some nice clothes or something like that, you might run into issues because there's just not a ton. Um, but again, you know, you, you also have to understand that this is my opinion. You could move out there and it could be perfectly fine. You could have everything that you possibly need. Um, but for me, I would maybe want... I would, if I was to be in Kingston, and I've, I've talked about moving to Kingston, my wife and I have, um, if we were to do it, we'd wanna be really close to the highway so that you have access, fast access to West Knoxville. Um, the second part uh, of the cons would be, um, if you are in kind of the furthest corners of Kingston, you can kind of have a far drive to stuff. So, you know, you could be, you know, 15, 20 minutes from the town of Kingston, and then you could be like, you know, 45, 50 minutes from Knoxville. So, you know, if Kingston is something you're interested in, just get with me and we can kind of map it out and figure out, you know, what part of Kingston would be best for you. So. We're gonna move right along. The next place we're gonna talk about is the world famous Oak Ridge, okay? And you may be wondering why is Oak Ridge world famous? Well, it's world famous because of the laboratory there, Oak Ridge Lab. Um, they actually built the atomic bomb there and for a long time it was called the Atomic City. For whatever reason, the folks of Oak Ridge don't like that anymore. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, it's, it's certainly a huge piece of history and there's a lot of that there. Oak Ridge is great. It has a ton of shopping. I mean, they're still building new stuff out there. You've got, you know, tons of restaurants. <clears throat> You've got pretty much anything you could want, right? So kind of like Maryville, you know, you're probably gonna be pretty happy with the shopping in Oak Ridge. And again, like all of these other places, you're close to Knoxville. So you're not far out if you do need something a little bit more special. Um, schools in Oak Ridge actually rank pretty high on niche.com as well. You know, certainly check that out for yourself. And as far as prices go in Oak Ridge, you have a really good mix of prices because you're gonna have some really older developed neighborhoods and then you're gonna have some newer neighborhoods. So those older homes, you know, you're gonna be able to get a better deal there. Now, um, with those older homes, um, occasionally, uh, I, I sold one not too long ago to some first time home buyers that had been completely renovated, new roof, new HVAC, new plumbing, electrical, everything like it was practically a brand new house um, and they got it for 260 so there's really not a terrible price um, and a lot of those neighborhoods are actually really close to you know um, shopping like like they could actually walk to several restaurants and, and a few other places from their home which is really cool um, you don't really get that a lot in east tennessee you know we just we don't have a lot of you know shopping near housing for whatever reason um, Another benefit that I'm going to talk to you about um, is uh, Melton Hill Lake. Again, 
I love the lake stuff. Um, but in, in particular, uh, or more specifically, um, Melton Hill Park, which is a park that is right on the lake. is It's such a cool little park because um, there's a little place there where you can rent like kayaks and, and canoes and like little paddle boats and stuff like that. There's um, a ton of sidewalks so you can ride your bike. People are always running. It's just, it's really nice to, to see people in the outdoors and just enjoying themselves. Um, there's, you know, tons of playgrounds. So Mountain Hill Park is really cool. I mean, if I lived in Oak Ridge, you know, I would probably spend a good amount of time there just because I do enjoy being outside. Now let's talk about some cons to living in Oak Ridge. Uh, the, the worst thing is the traffic and it's not all the time. It, it, specifically from like 4.30 to 6 is just horrendous. And it's because there's so many people that work at the lab and there's only one main road that goes from you know Oak Ridge to Knoxville and the surrounding areas, unless you go out the back way, but the back way, it, it's such a roundabout way, it, it would take you just as long. But if you get stuck in that traffic, I kid you not, it has taken me 45 minutes to get just a couple miles up the road to the interstate. It's awful. If you wanna live in Oak Ridge, just try to make sure that you don't have to leave Oak Ridge between 4.30 and 6. Now, going into Oak Ridge is fine. Like if you worked in Knoxville and, and were driving into Oak Ridge, no problems. It's just leaving is awful. And then the second thing is taxes. You know, taxes are certainly going up everywhere but for whatever reason they've always been a little bit higher in Oak Ridge so you know just something to, to consider it's not so much higher that like I would never consider living there but it you know every little bit counts especially in today's market so you know just be aware of that now let's talk about good old Jacksboro and I say it in my redneck voice because it's a little country out there but I love it. I really do. I think Jacksboro is awesome. Um, you've got Norris Lake, which is one of the most beautiful lakes around. Um, you've got Royal Blue, which is a huge WMA. Um, there's also a lot of things you can do within that WMA. So there's like a little campsite you can go to. Um, and you could probably visit their website as well and, and get more information on this. But like if you're into like ATVs and side-by-sides and stuff like that, like there's a big campground you can stay at. Um, you can, you know, ride all the trails and stuff like that. Um, if you're into hunting, it's a gigantic WMA with so much, you know, land to explore. Um, it's actually where the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation ha uh, started their, their elk uh, reintroduction to Tennessee. So there's, there's a good amount of elk out there, which is cool. You might see some bears. There's definitely a lot of turkey. There's deer. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a cool place. Um, there's also a cool little shooting range. Um, they've got like three shooting ranges out there. They're all outdoors. So that's a cool little place too. Um, so that's all just like right up the highway from Jacksboro. So that part of the world is just, it's cool. It's really pretty. Um, like I said, you're going to get a lot of mountain views. Um, if you get a lake view, it's going to be really gorgeous. Um, and then um, on Norris Lake itself, there's also quite a bit of public land. So uh, me and my friends, uh, we, we try to go camping out there every couple years and we always love it. Um, you can look on TVA's uh, recreational map to see uh, public land. And I mean, you know, as long as no one's there, you can just go right up there and camp. You know, there's a lot, there's a ton of campsites, you know, all, all throughout uh, Norris Lake. So definitely check that out. Um, <clears throat> As far as shopping goes in Jacksboro, it's okay and it's getting better. It's kind of like Kingston, like there's enough there to where you don't really have to leave. Uh, but, you know, if you did want like a really nice dinner or you wanted, you know, something special, you might have to go to Knoxville. Uh, but they're actually building quite a bit. I was up there just the other day um, showing some property and uh, they're building a TJ Maxx and I think like a home goods store or something like that. So there, it's definitely coming along. There, there's certainly lots of stuff. You know, there's a Walmart, you know, there's a ton of fast food places up there. So shopping is fine in Jacksboro. I, I don't think that, I don't think it'd be too big of an issue.
Now, another huge pro to living in Jacksboro is the pricing. So Jacksboro might be one of the last places in our little area where you can get a decent home for $200,000. Um, I've sold two actually in the same neighborhood and actually right side by side to each other for 205. They were like built in like 2005, uh, three bedroom, two bath, half acre lots. I mean, nice places, you know, very, very solid homes. And like I said, 205 was a selling price. So can't beat that around here. That's, that's actually really good. Um, as far as cons go, you, you can be far out. So it's kind of the same thing with Kingston where like if you're close to the highway, it's a straight shot to Knoxville, you're super close, you're 15, 20 minutes. But if you're on down the road a little bit, especially when you start getting into like La Follette, um, you know, you might have a 45 minute drive to Knoxville, maybe 50 minutes. And then if there's any hiccups with traffic, which we all know how that goes, um, you know, that could certainly be extended. So, you know, that's really the only con I see to living in Jacksboro. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit more rural, so you have, you know, different things that come with that that you have to deal with. But all in all, it's a nice place, um, very affordable, and it's beautiful. So, uh, Jacksboro, two thumbs up for me. Um, moving on, now we're going to talk about a place that you guys have probably been. If you've been to East Tennessee, especially if you've visited the Great Smoky Mountain National Park, you've probably been to Sevierville. Um, Sevierville runs right into Pigeon Forge, which runs into the Gatlinburg, um, and it's a, it's a cool little town. Um, Sevierville really is kind of split into two different sections. You're going to have like the more touristy section where there's a lot of a lot of that going on. And then you're gonna have the local section, like more like downtown, um, where there's tons of local spots and lots of good stuff going on. Um, the job market out there is great because of so much stuff. Um, you've got as much shopping as you could possibly want. <clears throat> In fact, my wife and I go to Sevierville um, at least once a year to go shop around the outlet malls. Um, you know, you get better deals up there and you can park and walk to, you know, hundreds of different stores. It's, it's a cool little situation. Um, restaurants, you've got a slew of everything. I mean, again, there's as much in Sevierville as there is anywhere in East Tennessee just because of, you know, all the attractions and everything like that. Um, so Sevierville, really pretty views everywhere. Um, you've got the Little Pigeon River that, that runs through it. You've also got Douglas Lake, which Douglas Lake is kind of on the other side of, of, of Sevierville. You, you probably won't see it unless you're over in kind of that Dandridge area. But Douglas Lake is right there with Norris Lake. It's gorgeous, it's deep, there's not a lot of development, so you get really pretty views, lots of mountains. I mean, it's top three, you know, prettiest lakes in our area for sure. Um, so with Sevierville, you're, uh, you're, you're gonna get great shopping, you're gonna get really pretty views, you're gonna have a great, you know, job market out there. Um, the prices are, eh, they're about like what they are everywhere else. They're, you know, similar to Knoxville prices, kind of closer to Maryville prices. You know, you're definitely not gonna get like a steal out there because, you know, it's kind of a popping little town. Um, I would say the two uh, cons to living in Sevierville, I kind of already hit on them, um, tourism, and then the other one I would say is traffic. Like if you actually look at a map, you would think, oh, from Sevierville you could get to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park like pretty quick. But then when you have to deal with all that traffic, it's, it's really not, it can take you quite some time. Um, especially when you're, you know, going through Pigeon Forge or Gatlinburg, you know, sometimes on the right day, it might take you an hour just to get a couple miles up the road, you know, so that's just something you have to deal with. The good thing though, is that like, if you're a local, like once you become a local, you kind of will start to learn the back roads and the, the, you know, how to get around, you know, different situations and that'll help out. And you'll also find, you know, the local spots so that you're not kind of in the middle of that, you know, touristy stuff. Um, but Sevierville, I think, is an awesome town. Um, I really like it up there. Again, my wife and I, we go up there, you know, at least a, a few times a year just to, you know, try different places. I mean, the restaurants up there are, are really, are really good. And they're always adding new stuff, you know, always. So 
So yeah, Severable's great. I think that you should definitely check it out if you know that sounds like your cup of tea. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, I appreciate it. If y'all have any extra questions, just let me know. You can email me or call me or text me, whatever works best for you. I'll leave my information below. Uh, again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video.